Greetings. It's teardown time again. What we've got here is a SmartUps VT 40 kVA UPS. Big hefty thing. You can see we've got 16 battery trays all at the bottom and one big 40 kVA removable, if you're strong enough, power module. This isn't the UPS that I'm going to be tearing down. That is actually a replacement power module. The original power module wasn't too happy about the UPS being in a, in a room that's reminiscent of a cave. This is the new room we moved the UPS into after we spent six grand on a new power module. The old power module is there. It took three of us to get the replacement down those steps, which are as steep as they look. That is not going up in one piece. What I'll do is I'll dismantle it here and then I can do a proper tear down once I get it home. There's not really much to see before you take the lid off. It's got these great big connectors on the back for when this slides in and plugs into the back plane which has all the connectors for the mains and down to the battery terminals and everything. A lot of screws later, this is what you're confronted with. What I think we have here is two 20 kVA power modules. You can get a 20 kVA version of this UPS and it's just got a big blanking plate on this side of the, of the front panel of the 40 kVA, you've got the whole thing. So you've got this daughter board here, which just has nothing on it at all. That's a serial interface panel. Again, no components on there. This is where the accessory slot is for the front. So you can put your network management cards in or multi-port serial cards, environment monitors, whatever, and go in there. And we have this, which looks like it might just be the brains of the outfit. We'll have more of a look at this a bit later on. You can see now that there's quite a modular design to this. You can see more from this angle, there's a main power module plus an auxiliary one here. The next job is to unbolt this. An interesting part of the design here is you can see all this metal work is not in contact with the chassis. It's all spaced out. Even here it sits on a metal plate which sits on a plastic spacer. The spacers here the circuit board on the top wasn't connected directly to it either. It's all separated out. So presumably a fault in here could be detected and it shut down rather than faulting straight to earth. That's my interpretation of it anyway. I don't know. Anyway, all the bolts out. That's a power module. You can see there's another one just like it in there. We compare the two side by side. This looks quite heavy. The only difference I can see is that this one has these big jumpers here and down below and this one doesn't. Around the back then you can see there's some rather nice heat sinks in there. We'll have a better look at that in a little while. In the meantime I've got to get that other power module out as well. So here we have a somewhat more exploded view of that power module. 
The good news is, all these parts are light enough for me to carry up the stairs now. Let's get back to the workshop. First on the dissecting table we have the brains of the outfit. This is the board which was sitting on the top facing down into the power modules. It's all based on a Texas Instruments DSP. It's a TMS320 C6000 series. And the other main chip on you is a Xilinx Spartan 3 FPGA. The rest we've got various glue logic here, various um, 74HCT series chips. A lot of these chips around, which I can't find the part numbers for, anywhere on the internet. And apart from that, there's not much else to see on here. You can see there's a lot on there, but it's, it's all boring stuff. There's small resistors, small capacitors, that said glue logic, and don't know what these are. One interesting thing on here is this yellow device here is actually a lithium battery which unclips from the top of the real-time clock chip. So you can actually change the battery and just snap a new one on. If you want some more detail on this, here's a high-res scan of the board. Sitting just behind three of the six 24 volt 11 watt fans was this power supply. And what I thought were jumpers on the other board turned out to be heat sinks. These are connected through to a, a copper pad below the diodes and the transistors. Some nice big 1.6 amp 500 volt fuses there. So I assume this runs on two phases of the three-phase supply. And it features some nice MOSFETs here. They're um, Ixis IXFT 12N100Qs, which are rated at 1000 volts and 12 amps. So, very nice. That's the brains of the outfit dealt with. Onto the brawn. This is one of the power modules. This is the secondary power module. If it was a smart VT20, this power module wouldn't be in there, it would just be the other one, which I'll show you in a minute. You can see here where those heat sinks would appear. On the other board, they're there. On this one, it's just blanked off, but you can see where you'd have those heat sinks sitting over the top of the power transistors here. A couple of toroids, some nice chunky capacitors here. These are all 470 microfarad, 450 volts, and we also have nine of these 600 volt, 10 microfarad capacitors as well. Plus a couple of relays, then which look quite small, but they're still rated at 30 amps. These fuses at the back are rated at 16 amps at 500 volts. And the fuses at the front then are rated at 80 amps for the two battery input fuses and for the three phase input and output then 63 amps each. All at 690 volts AC or 500 volts DC. And this board is then of course bolted through using these to the power boards down below. Here are the power modules. These have a part number on them apparently 850-0441B and they're revision 3. There's 3 in this one and there's 3 in the other unit as well. Look at these headers then which connect between here. These popped up through the board into the ribbon connections on the top. Six screws fasten these in at the front. At the back they're just held in with a slider so this should now lift out. Now that is a nice bit of heat sink. I was going to order some heat sinks from eBay. I don't think I'll bother now. There's two of these in each power brick and there's six bricks in the whole unit. 
this is bolted along here and on the underside as well so it's bolted to this PCB and it's bolted down to catch the transistors you loosen the bolts off and this slides out the transistors are actually stuck down on this until I prise them free you can see there's the, there's the bolt as well there is the bar which was anchoring through the bottom of the board so it's quite a nice chunky heat sink and you can see very well, very flexible there because you haven't got a bolt through it you just use this to clamp down at whatever whatever points you want very nice as you can see there are a few diodes in here and the thermistor in the middle and the transistors are 47N60C3 which is 600 volt 47 amp MOSFETs so there we have it caps you already saw the transistors on the other side are much the same as this side so same sort of setup we have two LEM current transformers here it's the big thick bus bar going through and they just solder down on the underside of the board then couple of caps these small daughter boards with another mystery chip on them it's a it's a look an A3120 whatever that is it's much like on the other board it's another mystery chip really and we've got some mystery transistors under here which I'd have to saw the heat sinks off to take a look at and I can't be bothered oh another CT there so there's actually three CTs on here so we're three CTs six nine and the other board eighteen so uh, parts wise it's quite a score I suppose scrap metal wise is quite a score as well. All this steel will go for recycling. I don't need it. Well, I think I found where it failed. <laughs> that must have gone off with a hell of a bang. This sits there. So it's gone boom basically between here and here. As I said earlier it was in quite a damp area. It wasn't damper than you, than the uh, than the APC manual recommended. It says you know it can handle a fairly high amount of humidity, and it wasn't that humid in there. But I think it was a combination of it being cold and damp in there, is what caused this to happen. Hence the UPS being moved into its own little air-conditioned room, and having a new power module at the cost of six grand. Still, I'm sure the transistors are fine. 40 kilowatt ZVS driver, anyone? Now you can see the difference in the 220 kVA power modules. This is the main one. This is the secondary one that turns it from a 20 kVA to a 40 kVA unit. And you can see there's a lot more stuff in the middle on this one. That's 400 volts, 220 microfarad. That's 4,700 microfarad at 63 volts. There's another 400 volt, 220 there. Another one of these odd little boards at the top and here. It looks similar to those little daughter boards on the power modules that, that sit underneath these. And a few extra relays and bits and pieces as well. Presumably it's only needed once for the whole system. You can see there are a lot of interconnects here which go down to the sub boards. But there's a lot of connections back here as well. So it may be that whatever these do just go through the back plane into the next board I don't know anyway there's a bit more to go this is what was sitting at the back of the whole thing and is the reason why the one modules appeared longer than the other all the rest of the equipment was all at that end we've got a 40 amp contactor we've got a 62 amp contactor with three current clamps again on each of the three phases 
various caps and a nice little toroidal transformer. But there's more stuff underneath this. So this board is <coughs> not a lot. 363 volt 4700 microfarad caps, the same as that one on the main board. Bit of electronics there, bit of um, logic there, I don't know what. There's a, there's a PIC 16F876 up here in charge of it. These are Semicron SKKT 132-12E, which are rated at 130 amps, I think it's a, I think it's average 130 amps, or 220 amps RMS at 1200 volts. And they come bonded and bolted onto these nice heat sinks, on which they will stay. And that's it. Now you know what's inside. An APC SmartUps VT 40 kVA power module. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.